Okay, so with the takedown, I've got in a horizon line about a third of the way up. I've got two little indications um, where my waves are and a line, a rough line where the beach is. I'm going to soak the paper, clean water, and soak the paper. So you can soak it all the way down. You don't have to stop. It doesn't hurt it. It will probably have dried out by the time we're finished with the the sky, but that's okay. We can rewet. Um, there we are. Uh, I haven't got my light on, so I can't see. So I should have to put my head down and have a look where the sheen is or where it's got any puddles. And I'm just going to leave that for about 30 seconds before I do anything else to it so that it, it soaks in and... Um, is ready for the paint. Whilst that's waiting, I'm going to get some of the, the pink in a puddle. Don't, if you're using alizarin crimson, or indeed this one as well, which is quinacridone rose pink, you don't want it too dark. And then I've got the, the yellow element of the whole thing, which is over in this corner here. Get a nice puddle, not too thick. And then I shall want some more blue. So I'm using ultramarine, which is a soft, warm blue. And... Uh, Bit of puddle of that. Wash the brush off. And let's have a look at the paper. Now, if it's warm where you are, it won't hurt just going over once more just to make sure that it's wet. It's not particularly warm here, but I know that and then I'm gonna get a tissue and go down the edges of my tape and soak up any water that's lying against that. Just check once more that it's all okay and we're good to go. I'm still going to use a fairly large brush and I'm going to get hold of some yellow. I just put that in there. Right. And just above the horizon line and just a wee bit below, but not too much a stroke or two. Just don't make it flat. You can make it. sort of on the slant. If you want to make it, remembering it always dries darker, if you want to make it just a bit darker, now's the time. Clean brush, get a lot of the water out, get into the pink. Pink goes over the top of it, both in the water and in the in the sky. I'm just going to make a little bit darker and just do some half strokes. Now because my pink is now overpowering the yellow, I'm just going to do a bit more yellow 
and then you've got to know when to stop fiddling with that, otherwise you'll have an almighty mess. But I've got a damp brush and I'm just pushing it about. That's all. Damp, clean brush. Then we go into the blue and then once we've done this, we can sit back a moment. So I'm just coming from one way. So I've got one of those slanty skies. Getting lighter up to that left hand corner. And I'm just going to get a little bit of uh, blue and just put it in that corner there, otherwise but I'm leaving it so that it just, we've got gaps at the top there. So you've got the gap, the feeling of white cloud up there. And then we should want some blue, light blue in the water. Go about to where your wave is. It's very light because I want a patch of light in the middle there. And that's it for, for the sky and the sea. So whilst, after that's dried a little bit, I'm going to get a little bit of the, the blue on a smaller brush. This is a number, number four. And I'm just going to brush on the side. Just going to pull it up. And put a wave in, the, the beginnings of a wave. And I'm just going to feather that edge out so I don't. So it's not quite, it's not so pronounced definite. And then I'm going to do this. Whoa! I'm going to make a mess behind it. So I quickly pick that up with the with a damp brush. You can't really see a great deal, but, and then put one in there. They're not straight, they're, they're, they're sort of curved in places, but they are horizontal, otherwise, can do them all on a slant, but you can't, especially if you do them all going the same way. And then a little one back there. Just did a little, it's like an eye shit there. Not even an eye. It's thicker towards the left than it is the, the right. I'm still just using ultramarine blue and I'm feathering out the bottom so it's really you're only seeing just the top of it I'm just doing a few And I'm lifting a bit of paint underneath them so that they're, you've got a little bit of white. Because that, I mean, it sort of happened naturally when I was feathering the paint out. 
It's all very faint at the moment. We'll put in something darker later. Needs a bit of a, a tail that side. There we go. So that's just a very quiet bit there at the moment. So I painted this, the sand using um, browns mixed from the pink, the yellow and the blue and dry brushed across and got some, left some spaces to indicate the, the ripples in the sand. Uh, little bit of a different colour of brown. Just on that in places. Just to give it a little bit of texture. We could even do a bit of splatter if you you wanted, but do remember to, to cover up the uh, the rest of it. I'm going to use the liner brush now and the my mixture of um, ultramarine blue, ultramarine, I'm going to use that and I'm just going to add a tiny bit of paint oh, grey. Sorry. A liner brush, what does that look like? It's very thin, quite long. There it is. Look, if I show you what I was using for the beach, that's that's the red one. Yeah, that's that's the liner brush. So it's it's a very thin one. You use a liner brush for heck. Well, I do for a, a lot. Um, right. Thank you. That's but you can buy them quite cheaply. Um, what's I've got one here by Dale Rowney. They kind of either call it a liner or a rigger. Well, I've got a rigger. Yeah, use your rigger. Oh, that's yeah. the liner, as you can perhaps see, is a little bit. There's this one's the liner. Let's move that one, and that's a rigger. So you've got it's a finer brush as a liner, but a rigger will work just as well. Thank you. Okay, so. Okay, so I've got a little bit darker of the um, ultramarine because I put a tiny, tiny touch of, of um, Payne's Grey in it. And I'm going to look to see where I put my original waves. And I don't want to paint on them, but I want to paint just above them. So it's a... I don't know what shape that would be. A flattened off... Um, Half a fish, something like that. So in between, just um, but not on those little waves we first painted in, uh, which probably nearly all gone. And then I'm just using some plain water on the same brush and just Blending it in a bit at the bottom, so you just got to the top of it is is um, continuous, but the the bottom sort of fades away. This one because it's getting closer to you. It can be a little bit bigger. And then this one, I'm going to have a little one there. Mm -hmm. 
clean brush on it, then wipe it on a kitchen towel. And move that paint out of the way. That one's at the front there, so that's bigger. Just going to go backwards a bit. And these are getting quite small towards the back because they're further away. Um, a bit there. Don't fill in all your white spaces. And I'm just blending out that edge using the clean water and wiping it on a on a kitchen towel before I put it on the paper. All right now, where we where we drew in those waves, I'm just going on the lines there where we drew them in. At the moment, mine are, I've got set there and set there. They don't join up. So this one, I'm going to join to that one. It, it became too symmetrical. And one at the back there. Another one there, another one there. They're getting fainter and smaller as you get further away from the from the beach. And there's one here. I'm not too keen on that one, so I'm just going to block that out a bit. And the next step is to use the dry brush. I'm going to go back to this number four. The brush is going to be quite dry. I'm going to use the same mix of Payne's Grey with Ultramarine. And with the brush on the side, pull it in towards the middle, only gently touching it. You don't want a solid mark, you want it to sparkle. You want it to break up and sparkle. So I cleaned the brush, I dabbed it on the on the kitchen towel, and then on the side pulled it in. It misses quite a bit, which is good. So dabbed it on the towel. In the middle, I want it to be quite light and not too many 
too many lines because that's where my light is. I need some more paint. So I've left a gap here. In fact, I just do a little bit across there, but not a lot. Leave that as the light bit. And coming down the sides here. sort of almost meet those waves, but not quite. Just come in a little way. At the top, where my line is, I'm just making that slightly darker. using that same colour. So that's using that horizon line to make sure that the, the sea is dark there. And I messed my paper up when I was rubbing out. Never mind. It wasn't dry enough. sort of blend and fiddle your, your way around that. Blend it in so it doesn't look just like a line. You can use damp brush and just blend it in. And I just put a little bit here at the sides. I get the liner with that same colour and just make, extend some of those out towards the sides. They're all, hopefully they're all level or levelish. Putting in a few extras, same shape. Elongating some of those lines at each end, some of the And then maybe just blending those bottom bits in on one or two, not all of them. That one needs blending in. I'm just using plain water and my brush and just pushing the paint around a bit. It's dried, but it will it will move a bit. Clean water again. That one needs a bit of a blend. You can see which ones, if you've got a really strong line at the bottom of it. Strong lines are okay at the top. If you've got a strong line at the bottom, it wouldn't hurt to be just softened off. 
Again, you don't have to do it to everyone, but then if you've not got any white in between, this is what we know as, as fiddling. So with clean water, I'm just going backwards and forwards with my brush and then using a tissue, clean tissue, to dab off some of the paint so that it gives me a white. Just a little hint of, of white underneath, of light, because sometimes you can get a bit carried away and um, the light disappears. So I'm just going backwards and forwards on the same spot and then dabbing it with the tissue. Backwards and forwards. Basically, I'm moving the hand and not the brush and dab it. So you can, if you do sort of do too many or too much, you can rescue it a bit. by lifting the paint out. And I'm even going just a bit further back into the yellow and just in a bit of a line to give me an eye to, so you're seeing a line of light. I'm just Although we haven't got a sun to go by, I'm just thinking, right, I've got a line going that way. Because I'm standing here and you can see the, the light sparkling on the water into the distance. And this is so fiddling. Right, I'm not going to fiddle anymore. Got a right mess there. That was trying to, so I rubbed it out too soon. Just tidying up the horizon. One way that you can do horizon without fear of it um, bleeding up is to use tape and I was going to do that and then of course I'd wetted the paper before before I remembered I was going to do that and we are where we are as it were so you could actually now put you could put in a boat if you wished you could put in a bit of a headland um, or you could um, put in a UFO if you wanted. I'm just going to get a bit of brown and do a few sticks and stuff on the beach. Just give it a bit of texture. This is all with the small brush. And where I've got the white bits, I'm just doing a little bit of brown underneath, which shows that there you've got wet sand on the around those bits. It's all just it really is it's it's, it's not necessary sometimes, but
and I'm going to put a little bit of of dark darker there because that's where it's wet. And then a set about the birds, I think. Oh, with a little bit of Payne's Grey, we'll do some goals. Flattened ticks. I'm going to do one here, very flat. And just a, a line. Can you see that? It's a very thin, flat line with a tiny dip. And at the dip, just do some little, three little marks, which to the eye says tail, feet whatever all we've got to do I've got to cover this up so and remember to also do it the other way because on the downward flat they've got their body above their wings and because they're quite big I'm just thickening ever so slightly I'm halfway along its wing towards its body ever so slightly and it just gives a more of a 3D look so do some up there take your eye up so Got it's three little, three little um, lines, really little lines. One on its side. One flying upside down. Just thicken them slightly, and little line. Put one right at the top there. And run out of paint on the paintbrush. And that's, that's it, I think. Huh? I just... Just putting in a few darker waves. Using Payne's Grey. Just small ones. You see a spot, you can Put some in, if not. Don't want too many.
and just do the same with that. Just agitate them and blend them a bit. You do want a dry, a drier. brush than I just used. There we are. I think Stop. 